good morning and welcome to a lecture on examination scheduling problem uh, this is professor polumi datta i am from the department of computer science and engineering techno india salt lake my rc id is 1263 before delving into what examination scheduling problem is all about i'd like you to be introduced to what are the topics that i'll be covering during the course of this uh, lecture i'll first define the graph coloring problem the chromatic number backtracking which is one of the design methods that is used uh, in uh, the analysis of algorithms course one of the popular methods of course an application of graph, graph coloring which is uh, the examination scheduling problem which i am going to discuss in details and how i have been able to apply graph coloring to uh, give a solution to this problem and some of the references okay let's start with the definition of graph coloring it is a problem of assigning colors to the various vertices of a graph such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color for example if i consider this particular graph and suppose i consider this vertex and this vertex these are adjacent because they are connected by one single edge and graph coloring problem will assign two different colors to these two vertices because they are adjacent and they'll not be uh, given the same color let's pick any two other vertices suppose this and this and obviously since they are adjacent to each other they have been assigned two different colors chromatic number it is the smallest number of colors with which a graph can be colored such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color it is also known as the chromaticity of a graph for example this particular graph which has five vertices and if i were to find out the chromatic number for this graph it is 4 now i'm going to show you how we use backtracking to solve the graph coloring problem and how backtracking can be used to generate the state space tree backtracking is a methodical way of enumerating the various possible options or decisions until we find out what exactly works this is of course represented by the state space tree as i've already told you a real life example of backtracking is uh, the sudoku puzzle which most of us are uh, into playing another example is uh, when you try to find your path in a maze you start from the entry and you need to find a path out to the exit and there are various options available to you some of these might lead you to the exit successfully and some might uh, end you up in a blind uh, spot so when you end up in a path that does not lead to the exit what we do is we backtrack or we retrace our steps uh, back to where we started off and try some other option backtracking does exactly that it is used to solve problems in which a sequence of objects is chosen from a specified set so that the sequence satisfies some particular criteria uh, many of us have uh, you know we kind of uh, confuse backtracking with brute force which is also a method where we try out various other permutations and combinations but backtracking is a finer refinement on brute force which is a much more cruder method of uh, finding out uh, solutions and enumerating various possibilities let's go back to an example of the graph coloring problem this particular graph having four vertices the vertex v1 which is adjacent to v2 v3 and v4 and the reason why v1 is colored with yellow and yellow is not used for either v2 or v3 or v4 the vertex v2 which is adjacent to v1 and v3 that's why having colored v2 with red i cannot use red for v1 or v3 v3 of course which is adjacent to v1 v2 and v4 can neither be colored with yellow nor with red so i assign a different color green to v3 i uh, i try to indicate the three colors i've tried to indicate the three colors as c1 c2 and c3 and generate the state space tree Uh, using it so let's see how the state space tree can be drawn this is what the state space tree looks for the previous example we start with the root node and i have three options that is three colors because three is the chromaticity or the chromatic number of the graph in the previous example the first vertex can be colored with either c1 or c2 or c3 now let us enumerate the leftmost branch of this tree having colored the first vertex with c1 i can color the second vertex with either c2 or c3 having colored the first vertex with c1 and c2 
the third vertex which is adjacent to both v1 and v2 can neither be colored with c1 nor with c2 so assign a third color which is c3 finally the vertex 4 just let's just go back to the slide it's adjacent to v1 and v3 so i cannot uh, uh, use uh, c1 and c3 for coloring v4 i have to use the color that is assigned to v2 which is c2 going by this logic i can populate and generate the remaining branches of this particular state space tree suppose i get stuck at any particular node and i cannot proceed what i do is i suppose it's this particular node where i cannot proceed further with the a solution i backtrack and come back to the root node and try a different branch altogether so i need to prune that particular node or that particular branch of the state space tree and this method is known as pruning but i'm not going to go into the details of pruning due to you know uh, crunch of time coming to the application of graph coloring or rather backtracking examination scheduling problem the objective of the examination scheduling problem is to schedule an examination in 10 courses such that students taking any combinations of these courses do not have a conflict while taking their examination. The objective is to find out as the question says what is the minimum number of periods required to conduct an examination in 10 courses so that students taking any one of the given combinations have no conflicts. So these are the seven combinations that uh, students can pick up in a particular semester or in a particular quarter and there are 10 unique courses. I have tried to design the solution based on uh, the method of backtracking and graph coloring. What I have done first is uh, drawn an adjacency matrix having 10 rows and 10 columns corresponding to these 10 subjects. A 1 in the adjacency matrix indicates that uh, the two corresponding i mean the one in a particular cell indicates that the corresponding row value and the column value i mean the corresponding row and the corresponding column are adjacent to each other and a zero indicates that the corresponding row and the corresponding column are not adjacent to each other so this is how i do it going by the first uh, combination uh, uh, maths english bio and chemistry okay first of all let me tell you that i have used initials for indicating these courses like m for maths e for english b for bio and c for chemistry cs for computer science g for geography so on and so forth going by the first combination maths is adjacent to english biochemistry going by the second combination maths is also adjacent to computer science and geography if i scan the remaining combinations i don't find any other subject that is adjacent to maths adjacent to maths meaning it has to be in the same combination uh, of courses in which maths also belongs to so in the adjacency matrix i'll put a one for english biochemistry computer science and geography indicating that it's adjacent to maths now let me just move on to the next slide yes this is my adjacency matrix and as i had already shown you going scanning the first two combinations we had found that maths is adjacent to english bio chemistry computer science and geography and that is the reason why i have populated this with a one a zero for psychology zero for p stands for psychology s for spanish f for french and h for history so these four are not adjacent to maths since they do not share the same combination as that of maths and the reason why i have uh, given a zero the diagonal elements are obviously null values and following the same logic you can of course uh, check out for yourself that this is how we populate the adjacency matrix now let's just move on to the solution i take a 1d array that is initialized to 0 10 integers for the 10 subjects i take a flag and i'm going to increment the flag at each point only if the two vertices are adjacent to each other let me go back to uh, the problem i start with maths and i increment the flag by 1 so maths the first flag it's incremented one for math one for math means if math is one of the nodes in the graph i use the first color to color maths now let's go back to the problem e is adjacent to maths so i cannot use one for english if e is another node that is adjacent to the maths node so i use another color that's two for english so i accordingly have assigned two to english bio Going by the first combination, bio is adjacent to both maths as well as English, so I can neither use one nor can I use two, I use three. K 
chemistry which is ad adjacent to maths english and bio so i cannot use either one or two or three and i use four okay you can understand this better i think with this adjacency matrix bio which is uh, look into the third row bio is adjacent to maths english so i cannot use one i cannot use two i have to use a third color a new color that's three chemistry i cannot use one i cannot use two i cannot use three i have to use four so that's exactly what i have done i've used three for bio i've used four for chemistry come to computer science this row the fifth row it's adjacent to maths it's adjacent to english biochemistry so options of coloring with one two three four is ruled out i assign a new color the fifth color the color five for chemistry now let's come to uh, computer science go back to the adjacency matrix the sixth row that's uh, computer science not the six i'm sorry it's the fifth row computer science uh, okay computer science i, I have already discussed so we colored it with six let's come to geography geography uh, is adjacent to maths english bio chemistry it's not adjacent to it's adjacent again to computer science so i cannot use one two three and five but i can use four since it's not adjacent to chemistry i can use the color four for geography so as you can see i've used uh, color four to color geography psychology let's see what we can do to psychology let's have a look into the seventh row it's not adjacent to maths but it's adjacent to english bio chemistry computer science and geography so yes i can use one to color psychology so accordingly yes one for psychology come to spanish it's not adjacent to maths english uh, chemistry computer science so can i use the question is can i use one the color one has been also assigned to psychology and spanish as you can see is adjacent to psychology so i cannot use one can i use two which is the color for english so i just need to check whether two has been assigned to any other vertex which is adjacent to spanish since two has not been assigned to any other vertex yes i can assign two for spanish next for history let's come to history the last row it's not adjacent to maths it's not adjacent to chemistry so can i use the color one color one has been also assigned to psychology and since psychology is adjacent to history i cannot use one can i use four four has been also assigned to geography so since geography is adjacent to history i cannot use four so for history i choose absolutely a new color a color six and in a similar manner using the same logic i use two to color french so if you finally look into this table there are six unique colors that i have been able to find out to color this particular graph or in other words to answer my question the minimum number of exam periods required to conduct an examination such that students taking any one of the combinations of the courses as given in my previous slide do not face any conflicts and the answer of course is six and of course we can again draw the state space tree as i've shown you earlier in my previous slides one of my previous slides maybe possibly slide number 7 in a similar manner you can also draw the state space tree corresponding to this particular example of the examination scheduling problem which i think you can try out as a home assignment these were some of the references that i have considered to uh, make this presentation i hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you've been able to understand some of it thank you very much for your patient hearing